I'm very impressed by DesignCon this year. We've uh, been participating, exhibiting at DesignCon for many, many years, and it's a great show. I, we meet a lot of very good people. This year, especially, I'm very impressed. It's been very busy. We see a lot of activity, and I think it's very, very encouraging for the industry. We manufacture a thin film resistive foil that is processed subtractively by board shops, such as Sierra, for embedding resistors and very high density printed circuit modules. Business has actually been very, very brisk. Um, many new applications for our technology, it's been around for decades. What we're finding is that there's a number of new opportunities, new applications in high density IC package modules where the need for very fine line circuitry and high density passive integration into printed circuit boards is very critical. In high frequency RF modules for power dividers, antennas, radar systems, others, sensor technology, Internet of Things, we're designing to men's microphones used in cell phones and other devices. And so we're seeing a kind of a broad growing use of embedded resistors in a variety of printed circuit board applications. You know, actually the resistive elements themselves are defined by printed net circuitry. And because things are getting denser, denser in printed circuit manufacturing, what we're finding is that resistor elements are becoming smaller. Typically, designers want to design a resistor within the trace itself. So if a trace is five mils wide, they'll have a five mil wide resistor. But now we're looking at things like four mil, three mil, two mil, one mil wide traces. So for very high density IO technologies, you're looking at 50 micron, 75 micron, 40 micron resistor widths defined by that copper trace width. And so the precision of that copper etching is very, very critical in defining what the resistive element size will be and ultimately the value and tolerance of that resistive element. There's multiple, you know, multiple reasons to use a resistive material. One, of course, is economic. Everybody wants to save money. So if I have an IO density, it's I'm doing a, a, a termination of an IC and I have a chip carrier board and I have one resistor. You know, the cost is going to be whatever our material cost and process cost is. But instead of one resistor, there's 10 resistors. The cost is now one-tenth for each individual unit resistor. What if there's a thousand resistors? Now suddenly it's one thousandth of the material and process cost. So as the densities increase in terms of packaging, lower the cost per unit resistor becomes. And in many applications, you're, you're looking at fractions of a cent to embed a resistive element within a carrier board or a printed circuit board, done. No assembly required, no area on the board to take out over as well. Secondly, by removing your passes off your board, maybe you can shrink your board more, reduce layer count, okay, reduce height. All those things are rather critical in terms of, of, of design, in terms of economics. Third is removal of solder joints. If you're in a high performance application where where you have maybe a high G-force or you're in an area where a lot of temperature extremes, remove that solder joint, more reliable. And fourthly is the electrical performance. Material is essentially inductive free, the omega ply resistive film. Therefore, you're removing a lot of parasitics off of the board, EMI reduction. So not only do you get better performance, you're able to put resistive elements right on any drive lines for termination or embed a, a, a heater element in order to heat up an IC for maybe a burn-in application or to maintain an IC at a certain uh, t operating temperature for optimum performance. Or maybe you want to go ahead and just remove some of the other EMI coming off the board. Our product is actually used for an absorber to remove that off that board. So there's a lot of variety of reasons to use it. Economics always is number one. Performance and electrical enhancements, number two. Package densification, simplification, number three, and ultimately reliability. Reliability is critical, which is why we're used in extensively in military aerospace, space-based applications, many, many antenna, many, many radar systems, lots of things that drive you know, use of, of, of passive technologies inside of a board. We've been doing this for 40 years. We have a lot of experience. We've done a, a, a tremendous number of applications. What we want to do is make sure that the PCB designer optimizes the design. 
both for the resistive element and for manufacturability. So it's a team effort. What I tell PCB designer is, it's using us at our company and Omega Technologies as a resource to help with the design and working with the board shop so that together, you know, as a partnership, we come up with an optimum design to give them optimum performance and, and manufacturability. And that's very, very key. So it says, use us as a resource. Use what we've already done. Don't reinvent the wheel. We want to make sure your design is successful. And that's very, very important. We have design rules on our website. Our website, uh, it's omega.com, O-H-M-E-G-A.com, has a lot of white papers, design rules, there's a lot of good information. It is available to the design engineer. They can always get a hold of us. We have people ready, willing, and eager to go ahead and talk and work with designers about proposed designs and applications and use us as a resource. And that's what we're there for to help in the design and make sure it's optimized for manufacturability.